10 persons hello guys welcome back to my live I am your diva chef Simone Walker Barrett thank you so much for checking in stopping in and for those who are going to be staying in you all are welcome all right so I want to welcome you to my kitchen as per usual Remember to tell me where you're watching from. I'd love to give you a shout out. Also, tell a friend that Chef Walker Barrett is on. And so, let's make some Sunday dinner. Andrine now, Spence, hello, good evening. Hi, Andrine, welcome. So again, welcome to those looking on from Instagram and welcome to those looking on from Facebook. Okay, Remember right, now evening, guys. to share the live. Hi everyone. For those who are just checking in for 2021, I want to say happy 2021 and blessings all the way. I wish you nothing but success, peace, joy, and of course, most importantly, happiness and good health. Okay, so this evening's dinner is inspired a little bit by the Mediterranean. Um, it's also inspired by the Middle East. And so, of course, as usual, every single thing I cook, I try to respect the cultural influences. And of course, I must put my Jamaican spin on it. So let's get into cooking Sunday dinner. I really, really enjoy sharing my Sunday dinners with you guys. And we are going to be starting with dessert as usual first. So today's dessert is um, inspired by banana bread. We love banana bread in this house. And so today I thought that, you know what, let me make some banana bread cookie. So I'm going to be taking the same flavors and more that you would normally put in a banana bread and we're gonna be making a cookie with those flavors so let's go empress of 85 hi chef you're looking lovely this evening thank you all right guys so for our banana bread chocolate cookie i don't remember the name that um, went up i'm using some butter to in exact i'm using four ounces of butter and two kitchen spoons this eating spoon of peanut butter because peanut butter and Banana goes well together. Miss Chelsea says hi. Hi, Chelsea. Cooking with love one says hi. Hi. So in here, Andrine I'm, Spence watching from New York. Thank you for checking in, Andrine. I'm adding one cup of brown sugar. I'm also adding a tablespoon of ginger. Oops. Jacqueline Williams, Queens, New York. Hi Jackie, thank you guys. Queens is in the building. Clever Allen, you really look like the diva this evening. <laughs> thank you. And cinnamon powder. I'm still wearing my church clothes. MB Embrace Gems. I definitely will come buy street food Saturdays one day. And we will be more than happy to have you. Cherry Moore says hi watching. Hi Cherry, thanks for watching. Janet Gardner, happy new year. Happy new year, Janet. Okay guys, so let's recap. So we're making a chocolate banana bread cookie. I know that's a whole mouthful. In my container, I have four ounces of butter, two eating spoons of peanut butter, one cup of brown sugar, and all the warm spices, like for example, ginger, freshly grated nutmeg and cinnamon. All of that is in my container here and I'm going to take it over to the mixer and put it on and I'm going to let it creep. 
no um usually you know you make your banana bread mostly by using oil but for this i really love the flavors that the butter bring to the finished cookie because the cookie i want it to be you know chewy and gooey so i'm using butter over oil so let's go kimon barrett from kesselton st mary hi kimon jackie williams i had dinner already now i'm hungry well, Jackie, I'm glad you had your dinner and you are stopping in to share, you know, my dinner with me. A very truly, of course. So while we have our butter and good stuff creaming, we're going to get our dry ingredients together. And in this container, I have two, this is actually three cups of flour, but I think I'm just going to use two cups. Uh, and this is baking flour and to this I'm adding two teaspoons of baking powder and half teaspoon of baking soda. Proof Blossom awesome. JA says hi along with 2017 share. Hi guys, thank you for checking in. Serena says hi. Yana Beauty says nice, nice kitchen. Hi Serena, thank you guys so much. Now guys, I just added some uh, coconut milk powder and that was two measured tablespoon and all I'm doing here I'm just mixing everything together I'm adding some salt as well you know how I love baking with salt and so this is our dry ingredients and this is going to bind everything together I reserve one cup of my flour because I'm not sure that I need it but if I do the batter will tell me and then I will add it and so here is our secret weapon here. This is our chocolate component of our chocolate banana bread cookie. Of course, you know how I love everything, everything flavorful and everything Jamaican. This is our Jamaican chocolate. So it is still getting a moment. This is the same chocolate that you would have used to make coca tea, chocolate tea, whatever you call it. And by the way, guys, if you want to see how to make Jamaican chocolate tea for the younger Jamaicans who don't know about it, for the ones who have never heard about it, you can check out our YouTube channel, Next in Food, and look at the tutorial on how to make Jamaican chocolate tea. And of course, you can have it either hot or cold. I prefer to have it both ways. So in here, I'm adding... Good evening, cousins. Hi, cousin. Welcome. Don't forget to tell us where you're watching from, guys. So I just added my grated chocolate balls into my flour, baking powder, baking soda um, mixture. So that is ready. So I'm going to put that off to the side. And of course, I want to clean up, take away some of the stuff that I will not be using anymore. Tamika McCarthy watching from Central Texas. Thank you, Tamika, for tuning in. So guys, I'm gonna go over to the mixer to add all the good stuff. So right now I'm going to be adding our egg. I'm using one egg. And this is for average ripe banana. All I did was smash them. You know, bananas, they oxidize when you when they're exposed to air, and this is why they look a little bit brown. So oxidation is a process where fruits and vegetables take on a brown color. So basically they change a little bit from their natural color to a brown color. So don't be scared, it's still flavorful. So here goes, just packing up everything to go to my mixer. So come back. from Spanish Town. Thank you, Spanish Town, for watching. Empress of 85, watching from DMV, Virginia. Thank you for stopping in, Virginia. So guys, the egg is just added, and while that is mixing in, I'm going to prepare my cookie sheet. 
and turn my oven on. So I'm setting the oven to 350 and I'm turning it to 40 minutes. So I'm going to take about 15 minutes to preheat and then I'm going to um, put our cookies in. 2017 Sharon says I'm learning. I am glad that you're learning because that's one of the objectives of this live. This is where you come to learn, you know, and to be encouraged to make simple, delicious food with everyday ingredients for your family. Take that for me, please. The fox, the fox 1967 says hi, good day. Good day, thank you for stopping in. Kelly, Kelly Baker J.A. says hi. Hi, Kelly. All right, guys, so, you know, cleaning up is always a chore. And so what I'm doing here, I am prepping the pans with a little bit of aluminum foil. And this will make cleaning up very, very easy. Um, the Fox 1967 says looking fabulous tonight. Thank you. So, guys, I just want to give you just a little peek on... This is what this is what the cream butter and sugar looks like see that it looks creamy right and of course it is brown because we added brown sugar and oh my god it smells like peanut butter I love peanut butter you should try eating peanut butter and banana just with two pieces of white bread and it that is just absolutely delicious okay so I'm gonna be adding all the other ingredients and get our cookies going. Uh oh. Yes. So, banana going in. Cooked on the read says, Love your outfit, Chef. Very classy. Thank you. Lady Kimon, watch the YouTube channel again, please. Please tell her, tag her to it. I can't tag her to it. Well, tag it to her. So now I am adding the flour and the cocoa powder. And okay guys, so earlier I said that I might not need my flour, but I do need it, so I'm gonna add it. It's best to chill the, the batter. So I'm going to put this into, I know I said I was going to put it straight into the oven, but my chef guard is hitting me on the right hand side of my brain and saying, you know what, chef, you know better. So I'm going to put this in my fridge. Paulette says hi. Hi, Paulette. I'm putting this in my in the coldest part of my refrigerator and that's gonna be my freezer and I'm gonna let it chill for about 20 minutes okay and that's gonna give us a better result as it relates to the cookies could you just put this around the back in the standing Tanya freezer Tanya, Tanya, Malcolm, Chef Hatsa tonight <laughs> Hey Tanya, thanks for stopping in Girl, I'm in my church Sunday best So I'm just greasing our foil just to make sure that our cookies do not stick. So we're just gonna put these off to the side and we will come back to that because our cookie dough is relaxing. T-dot, can't wait till the month's end, heart eye emoji. 
All right, guys, so while I clean up, uh, so it's that time again for us to have street food Saturdays. And um, guess what? We are already fully booked for second seating for river dining. Okay, so only first seating for river dining is still available. So get your reservation in quickly because especially for the river dining, it goes much faster. It's a smaller space. So due to COVID, we take less persons there just to maintain our six feet apart um, while we're dining and enjoying the delicious food. So guys, in this spot, I have some onions. I'm going to add just a little bit of oil. 2017 sure says love your vibes. Thank you. And in this spot, I wonder who's making my dogs make so much noise. Tamika McCarthy, looking pretty nice. Thank you, Tamika. So our other menu items are as follows. Remember I tell you that today's dinner is inspired a little bit by the Middle East and a little bit by the Mediterranean. So we are doing the Mediterranean part of it in this pot, and that is our bulgur salad. Now, how many of you know what bulgur is? So let us clear the air right now. Bulgur is not rice, all right? Bulgur is a wheat. It is usually made from a variety of wheat, but mostly from the type called durum wheat. So it is that um, inner part, not the bran, but is close to the bran of the wheat plant. It is usually steamed and then dried, and then it is mostly used around the world for cereal, all right? But it is also great cooked with rice. Um, I use it a lot in my smoothies. I soak it first, so like when I want something heavy, because bulga is filled with fibers. It makes you feel full and focused all day. It makes a wicked, wicked porridge. You can cook it by itself. And so tonight, we're cooking it by itself. And this inspiration is from the Middle Eastern dish called tabbouleh. Tabbouleh is a Middle Eastern salad that is made with bulgur and lots of parsley, cucumber, olive oil, and all of those Middle Eastern good stuff. Tonight, I am going to tweak it to my Jamaican liking, and I'm staying true to all of those wonderful flavors, but guess what? I have to add a little bit more flavor to it. So I'm going to be adding, bam, a little bit of turmeric. And yes, turmeric is not only used in Jamaica, it's used all over the world. So I'm adding some turmeric and I'm adding the cumin. Cumin is naturally a part of it because how food culture is, is always whatever grows together, always go together. So in the Middle East, you will have lots of cumin and of course in Asia and other places you will have it. So in my pot, I'm adding cumin and I'm adding just a little bit of turmeric. Mark first in case Serene says good evening Karen from New Kingston. Pretty Hi. is says hello Diva Chef. Good evening. Hokton Reed says the porridge tastes awesome. Kimberly Taylor says wheat germ. <laughs> yes, so wheat germ. So germ is not germs as we know it. It's not something that's gonna make you sick. It's just what it is. It's a good um part of the wheat. So in this pot, I put the spices in, and I love to put my spices directly in oil because spices are fat soluble. What I mean is that spices will always release their flavors much better when you put them directly in fat. And by fat, I mean whatever oil you're using. So I'm using regular light olive oil here lady and so La ahead. lady kimon says quite interesting and 2017 share says let me see the package the package the bulgur package all right i'll let you see it shortly so this is how i'm building my flavor up for our bulgur salad um and you know the year has just begun usually 
at the start of a new year you want to just try and eat a little bit more healthier everybody's starting a diet that they they will not continue so i thought that it would have been nice to show you how to make something that is healthy and it's not expensive to make so bulga is always in our supermarkets Patricia so Brown, good evening like. family okay um okay. daniel brown great start i'm on hi daniel hi my sis Patricia Brown, looking lovely, sis. Thank you. Hey, Auntie Chef, Kedi, we're here watching from Kingston, Jamaica. Hey, Kedi Ro, um, call me after the live. I would love to speak to you. This is what the bulgur looks like. So this is the brand I pick up, and this is always in every supermarket. Oh, it's upside down? Anyhow, this is what it looks like. So this is what it looks like before I soak it. And this is one cup, true story. All I did was to soak it in four cups of hot water. And I soak it tonight because I'm using it to make a salad. Now, when you soak it, as of course, you can see that it fickle in, in bulk. And so it becomes soft. All right. So that's a little tip for you. If you don't have time to soak it, don't worry. It will cook. So you just put the water on it and just allow it to cook. I'm adding a little bit more olive oil. Okay, it says chef throwing shade at diet. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, I'm just encouraging you guys. I know, you know, you all know. January, everybody is in a, on a diet because we eat so good during the Christmas. But you know what? I always incorporate everything that is tasty in my diet. So I am, I am all right. So, Louise, Ermin Jackson Walker. Good evening, family. Simone, so pretty this. <laughs> Everybody. Hi, mommy. So everybody just calling me out. This is how I look when I have on my church clothes. Come on. So I'm putting my soak bulgur in. And a little fact, bulgur is sold um, in different variety in terms of you can get what we call an instant bulgur. Okay. That one, you basically just pour hot water on it and just leave it to steam and it will cook up very, 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 very quickly. I love this one because this one has more fibers. So I love to use it. And you know, I like to plan what I cook. So if I know I'm going to use bulgo, I just put it to soak in my fridge and I get up in the morning and I make porridge with it for my family and it just keep me full all day. Okay. Says it's true. You are correct. Lady Kimon, I need to learn some of this. The same things over and over is boring. Yes. So when you guys go to the supermarket, just walk along the aisles and read the packages and try something else. You know, life is too short to eat one type of food all the time. Mix it up. So our bulgur is on and I'm going to just switch. So what's happening is cooking slowly. It's already half cooked because I soaked it in hot water and I had it soaking from about four o'clock. So um, I know I'm good to go. So I'm cooking it slowly. Nathaniel, um, here. Nathaniel Smith says, a who talks a fancy? A me? Who you think? All right, guys. So in this other pot, I am going to be making my creamy ackee sauce. Have you guys noticed that ackees are all over the place? Yeah, it's ackee time. Ackee is in season. And of course, I love ackee. And ackee is getting a moment in another way tonight. So what I'm doing, I'm making a sauce using ackee. And I'm putting some of my favorite ingredients in my sauce. I love ackee with red rain. This is something that my dad used to love to make. So I'm adding it in. I'm adding garlic and I'm adding red onions and bell peppers. Okay, here we go. And I'm just gonna put these in, cover them, and let them just sweat away until I start smelling that beautiful red rain flavor. I know that it's going to be ready. Miss I'm just going to go check on my dough and see where we are at with that. So come back guys, don't miss me too much. I think the breaker went out. Go on and fix it. 
Miss Bird, right, Bird says rice and chicken cases love Jamaican's default meal. Don't get me wrong, guys. I love, love, love my rice and chicken, but I also love I love to eat. And so I get bored very easily. So I love to eat lots and lots of different things. Alright? And of course, being a chef. I am not one of those chefs who only eat certain one type of food. I have to eat many type of food so I can understand them and I can share them with my families and my friends, of course. Kimberly, them pot, them, them pots looks new. Yes, Kimberly, they are new. They are very new. You don't see that um, Christmas just came and passed. Thank you to my lovely sister Patricia. See, too, I cook all the time. These pots are not going to stay new forever because I am a lady that cook every single day. Lady Kimon says Aki is my favorite. I'm with you with that, Kimon. Aki is my favorite too. Kay, oh, we're good. Kay loves the pot handles. And these are the masterclass pot set. I am a master class junkie. I love the great chefs of the world, so I always buy their cookbooks. And I, when I travel, I go to their restaurants, although it costs me an arm and a leg. And I love to support them. And so when they drop their cookware in November, I had to call my sister and say, go get that cookware for me because I have to have it. 2017 sure says, beg you one of them nice pot there, please. Girl, I only have three of them, so I can't give you any. Um, when, the, when, the, when the quarantine and the flying free up and they get cheap, yeah. Kimberly Taylor says, it's not 20 minutes yet, Chef. I know, but Kimberly, you know how you get bully in the kitchen. I still have to check to make sure. ZDMI says, will the Aki recipe be on your YouTube? Yes, eventually it will be. So I want you guys to take notes of how I'm making this Aki sauce tonight. So let's talk about Aki. First of all, it is our beloved national dish. And for those of you who have never made Aki and saltfish or Aki and corn pork, we also have a tutorial up on our YouTube channel for that. So you can go and check it out um, and see how it is done. But Aki is a fruit. Just like many of what we love to eat in Jamaica, it came from somewhere. And so Aki was introduced to Jamaica by Captain Blight, the same guy who brought the breadfruit. Who knew? And so Aki comes from, you know, Africa. And of course, Africa is a continent. And so they have it there. They don't eat it though, you know, but um, we love it. So it is a fruit. Um, it grows on a tree in a pod and there are many, 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 many varieties of Aki. And I notice that Aki's are in season and when it is in season, I stock up. You open my fridge and you see Ziploc bags of Aki falling out on you. So I thought that I would just um, show you how to prepare the Aki in a different way. So we're using the same... Christina Henry, Aki is my favorite, so I must try this recipe. I'm using the same obedient fla flavors that I love and that my family love with Aki. And if you're Jamaicans, most of you would have crossed path with Redorin. Redorin is that smoky flavor, oily fish that we used to make salmon gundi. So if you don't have Redorin, you can pick up a bottle of salmon gundi and put some into this recipe. Okay. Variety is the spice of life. It sure is, Kay. Paul, Paulette, good evening. I would love to follow you on IG. Please tell your handle. Okay, so we're on IG at Street Food Saturdays and at Next in Food. Lady Kimon, it's, it's your kitchen for me. Love the look. 
Thank you. David the Great says hi, Chef Walker Bart. Hi, David the Great. So, guys, what I just added was this is just a little bit of dried rosemary. It really gives my sauce a depth of flavor. So, I'm just adding that in. And the thing about red herring is because it is an oily fish, it is also fat soluble. What that means is that it will literally dissolve in fat, and that's what just happened. It's like anchovies, you put it in a little oil and it just dissolves and just leave its flavors lingering and hanging out. Nadine like, Simpson, I think I'm late, so I'm looking on today's menu. Okay, Nadine, welcome, welcome. You haven't missed much. We are making a banana chocolate bread cookie that is in the fridge. Um, getting chilled and now we are making our creamy aki sauce this is going to go on our macaroni so in this pot I have green bell peppers red onion garlic dried rosemary uh, did I say red herring and red herring sauteed in some olive oil now I'm adding my aki and this was frozen. Let me just pour off some more of the frozen liquid. And I'm just going to add. Mary J. Campbell, Hi, Chef and Company. Hi, Mary. Lady Kimon, I love how you educate your audience with still preparing. Thank you very much. Um, is a teacher in me, Kimon. I do, when I'm not doing this, I am there educating my students there at the university of technology in the school of hospitality and tourism management so big up all of my students i know if you guys were on you would have called in calling out my name anyhow so what i'm doing i'm just basically sauteing the aki just like you would if you were going to eat it with boiled dumpling or whatever and then i'm going to turn it into a sauce Okay, so in this container, I actually have two cups of coconut milk. I'm using coconut milk tonight because I love the flavor of coconut milk and aki together. So in goes my coconut milk. And this is going to come to a boil. Now, if you don't have coconut milk, evaporated milk will do just fine. Cooking cream. But why would you not have coconut milk? Jake and Shan, Shan, I can't get fresh aki where I live. How do you feel about can aki? Uh, I, I don't have a it. problem. I don't have a problem with it because the standards for can aki, they're absolutely very, very good. The brand of can aki I like to buy when I'm overseas is called Thai Jewel. But I'm sure there are other brands. And basically, I think any brand outside of Jamaica should be okay so try it rinse it first though because it's in a brine so you want to pour it out of the can rinse it under cold water and then you add your flavors to it so guys we're going to let this come up to a boil and cook for about 10 minutes and then we're going to take it to the blender we will puree it and then we will strain it back in the pot and finish our aki cream sauce that we're going to be pouring over our macaroni now, all of macaroni. So, macaroni is a type of pasta, and that's what we're eating tonight. Just plain old macaroni with some good sauce on it. Alright, guys. Back to our bulgur. So, the bulgur is cooking slowly let me give you guys a close-up on the bulgur so I added some turmeric to my bulgur when you're cooking new foods um, if you're afraid of it what you can do is add the flavors that you put on the food that you love and then you will warm up to it much faster so this is sauteed onions um, some cumin which is a spice and some dried turmeric okay and so this is cooking nice and slow after which we will add some other good stuff in we're going to add pumpkin this is pumpkin this is celery and this is green 
bell peppers okay this is going to get added in and we're going to let everything cook together take on some more flavors you know what let me just add it from low because i think my bowl guy is soft enough i'm just going to add it on top without stirring it in and just let the steam from the bulgur soften it but before i cover it i want to add some salt Kedira, grandma goes for the brand spur chiyaki that's fine grandma that's that's fine so okay so we're adding some salt just to season up those veggies and then lid back on and that's gonna stay there and hang out and get nice and happy in the meantime i'm going to go over the stove so they're going to turn the camera to the stove and i'm going to be putting my macaroni to cook very shortly but before i do i want to start cooking our chicken because dish number three is going to be our saute chicken with mushrooms so let me get that started so here goes Chicken. Oh, why not? Why not? Huh? Why not go for the third stove here? Okay, you can go ahead and we could just put it here so that they could see what it looks like. So guys, we're going for the other tabletop stove so that I don't have to be moving too much. So you can see. Yes, I got you the um the gas stove please the gas stove for the sauteing is much better so let me turn so you guys can see all right so our ackee sauce is has come up to temperature and it is simmering nicely and we're just trying to do a quick stove upgrade to get the cooking done a little bit faster while I try to clean up some of these things that I'm not using anymore. Okay guys. So just moving away some of the stuff that I'm not using. This stuff always takes forever to come on. Here go in, get it on for me. Something is wrong with the switch that turns it on. Here, do a quick fuel change and see if that's a problem. All right guys, so the oil is on, getting hot for our chicken. It's almost time for us to remove our cookie dough from, from the refrigerator. Who was checking the time? Is it time to remove the cookie dough? I kind of feel like it's time. So I'm going to remove it, turn my stove back on. While I clean up, the bulgur is cooking. Nice and slow, the ackee sauce is also cooking. Let me just give it a stir. And I'm gonna get a spoon, I'm gonna taste the sauce, to make sure it has all the flavors that I wish for it to have. I'm gonna just put it here, put it here. Thank you. Okay, so here we go. We have another fire. And we are going to be making chicken. Kimberly say yes, it's time. Alright, Kimberly. So let me turn this down. I'm gonna go get it real quick while the oil gets hot for this dish. This is our Aki sauce. And this is how cooking is, it's multitasking. Oh my word, this ackee sauce is so good. That, that rendering flavor at the back. All it needs is just a little bit more salt. Kimberly, <laughs> 20 minutes has passed. Thank you, Kimberly. Nothing is wrong if it gets super cold. It's better to be very cold than not cold enough so our ackee sauce is chilling out and 
and keep him happy. I have a pan of water over here boiling for our pasta. So I know I'm doing a bag of things, bag of things, bag of things, but it's going to come together. I promise. I'm going for the cookie dough shortly, Kimberly. Lady Kimon will definitely tune into your channel. And Thank you, Kimon. It's not finished. Your channel is upcoming live. But you're dying. Have a great evening. Thank you for stopping in, Kimon. Much appreciated. Alright guys, so I'm running for the cookie dough. Jay says hi. Hi Jay. is here let me just make some space for it take this out the way turn it down all right guys so we're gonna do a little switch around Ashelia so that goes there and our cookie sheet comes here take this up and all right, so I have a little portion scoop. I'm going to be dropping my cookies on my cookie sheet. I'm making them small so that we can eat a whole lot without feeling too guilty. And you see how it firms up a little bit more? Because what happened in the chilling process is that the butter get firm again and so it will only melt when you put it in the hot oven and that will cause our finished cookie to have a nice chewy texture to it if you bake this you could use a bigger um, scoop but as i said i'm making them small because we want them that way and then we're gonna put a little bit of oats on them just to give it a little bit more vibe this will give me three dozen small cookies but i won't bake all of them on camera so these are going to go into our oven and at this time the rest of the oats is going to get mixed into the batter and I also have some nuts because my husband loves nuts. These are walnuts. You can add your favorite nuts. So I'm just going to add this into the batter and just fold it in just like that. All right, so there we go. And then with the portion scoop, we're just going to portion them. All right, that one looking a little weird. Let's put some more on top, okay. And these are going to bake between 15 and 20 minutes. So again, welcome to those who are just joining. Thank you guys for stopping in and for staying in. For those who are watching on Facebook, we ask you to share the live. For those who are watching on Instagram, uh, tell somebody that Chef Walker Barris is on. And I'm cooking from my kitchen and I'm teaching also. All right, so I think we're good so we're just gonna put this back in the fridge and we will get back to it and this is gonna go into the oven so here goes using this little convection oven it makes everything cook so much faster 
All right, guys, so now we're going back to our chicken. But before I do that, let me just take one little look at the bulgur. Look at that. So treat the bulgur like you're making a good season rice. That's all I'm going to tell you. So I'm mixing the vegetables in and I'm, I want the vegetables to remain very crunchy. So therefore, I am just gonna give it five more minutes. I'm going to taste it to make sure it is seasoned. Still want some salt. I mean, if you don't like salt, that's on you, but I love salt. So, and when I say I love salt, it doesn't mean that the food is going to be salty. It's just that I love that seasoning flavor, that salt bring. And I love to use good salt, like sea salt and kosher salt. And the good ones, not the, not the knockoff ones. Tanya okay. Bailey, hi sis, just joining, what's cooking? Hey sis. So we're making a bulgur salad, and in this pot, I am making a creamy aki sauce that is now ready to be pureed. So I'm gonna take it off. This is what it looks like, guys. So you see, it reduces down from here. So we got a little bit of reduction going, and that's good. So this is, so you see how it looks? So now we're gonna puree it, and it's going to look nice and smooth. So I'm gonna take it off the file, let it cool down a bit, and then put it into the mixer, the blender to be puree. So that's hanging out right there. And now we're going over to our chicken. Benny Watson, hello, hello, hello. I'm here, no port night. Hello, hello, hello. Chicken, your favorite. Your favorite, Miss B. Okay, guys, so I'm going to be doing some chicken. This is chicken breast. This is three chicken breasts. I cut them in small pieces and I marinate them in chicken seasoning. I also added a little bit of yeah I know a little bit of um, cornstarch and so I add the cornstarch because what it does during the sauteing process it helps to trap the juices in you know sometimes you're trying to saute or stir fry something and when you put the meat in it just starts to spring all kind of water and turn stew chicken so this is a little trick you want to put some cornstarch on it and that will prevent that part from happening I also added some wine to my marinade. So it's chicken seasoning, cornstarch, and wine. And I'm testing my oil to make sure that it is ready for me, and it is. So the chicken, I probably think I want the temperature of the oil to come up a little bit more. And also, what I find that the cornstarch does when you use it to marinate, especially boneless meat, Somehow it makes it appear a little bigger when you cook it. Look at that compared to this. Can you can you repeat what the cornstarch does? The cornstarch helps to trap the chicken juices in, or any meat for that matter, during the frying or sauteing process. This is a technique that is practiced mostly by Asian cooks, and so that's where I learned that from. So once you cut the meat, you marinate it with a little bit of wine, the seasoning of your choice, and of course some cornstarch. And you put the cornstarch powder directly on it, so the moisture from the meat allows it to stick. You see, you look at it, you couldn't tell that cornstarch was actually on it. Anthony Ella, big up chef. Speak up yourself, Anthony. Thank you for checking in. So guys, share, hit that share button and share this live. So here is our first piece of chicken. It's nice and golden. This is chicken breast. There's no need, absolutely no need 
to have it frying forever and ever. Amen. It will get dry and chewy. So you want to get it in and get it out as soon as possible. And that's what we're doing here. And I like to do this with a skewer, especially in my Teflon pots because I don't like to scratch them up. So we're frying. And I'm taking another little peek at my bulgur. I think it's ready, so I'm going to take it off. But before I do, let me just check the pumpkin to make sure. Oh yeah, we're good. So take it off the heat. I'm going to leave it open for it to cool down. We're doing a warm bulgur salad, so I have some other good stuff to add to my salad. These chicken pieces are ready, so I'm just going to take them out, just like this. Come on guys, get out of here. How fast was that? Take them out, and then we're going to add some more in. We just give a little, a little look on my cookie. Is this up and on the way? Check if the breaker went again. It's not on. Quickly. Benny Watson, this entire meal is boss. Wicked recipes. Hey Ben. Ben, you would love this enough because this is this is chicken dinner and this is your kind of stuff. We're doing bulga. Come on, get in there, get in there, get in there. So you want to move the chicken around, move it around so that they cook quickly. So this is not exactly sauteing, it's more like a pan frying. Um, when I initially um, thought about doing this, I thought about sauteing it, but then I said, you know what, I want some more color on the chicken because the pasta is going to be white in color and the sauce, the ackee sauce is going to be white also. So I decided, you know what, let me just pan fry the chicken to get a nice color on them. I'm going to add some tomato sauce to it and give it some more color as well. Ina says Chef, chef, chef T chicken. Huh? Ina says Chef T chicken. Hey Chef T. Debbie Ossie Black, Brooklyn. Hi Debbie, thank you for stopping in and you have Brooklyn in the house. Did we upload anything on the YouTube channel? All right, guys, so new video alert. If you had your notification on, you would have noticed that um, we uploaded a new tutorial today. Last week, we made our cassava beignet, and we got so many requests to put it up on the channel. So we did a tutorial, and we put the cassava beignet up on our YouTube channel. So you can go over there, watch the video, Share the video, like the video guys. And if you are new and you have not yet subscribed, we ask you to do so. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. So our YouTube channel is all about building a community of foodie while we try to preserve our culinary heritage and I'm preserving it from my perspective. Um, and so I try to share it with you in a tutorial format and of course a live demonstration format. And the recipes are always there for you to go and try. So Lisa, we're encouraging cooking. Lisa, yes, so it and already watched it before joining the live. Thank you, Lisa. Thank Lisa, you, did you share it? Come on guys, you need to share those videos. Patricia, 
I saw it on the notification system. Thank you, sis. Remember to share, share the channel, copy the link and put it on your story highlight so somebody else can be aware of our YouTube channel, Next in Food. So we're just asking you to share the love of cooking with us. Louise Jackson Walker, all the food you can Thank you, my mother. Benny Watson, forgot to mention, chef well cute tonight, cooking in style. Girl, I'm in my Sunday best. You know it is. So guys, I'm going to puree our sauce. Lisa says we'll do it shortly, Thank you, Lisa. So guys, I have my pot over here boiling for the longest while. And I'm go with water, I'm going to add our macaroni straight in to cook one whole cup of the macaroni. I'm just going to add it in and let them do their thing. So I'll come back to it. It will shrink down slowly. Keep an eye on that chicken. This is our ackee sauce. Let me just, um... Kelsey Ann Watson, the diva chef, the best. Hey Kelsey, thank you for checking in. So we're adding in our aki sauce and we're going to make it into a puree, nice and smooth. Pink, pink plug said I need a, a one class with you. Need a one class with me? Alright, so I'm rinsing out our pot because I'm going to strain my sauce directly right back into the pot. So I'm just getting it clean. And I think we're good. QG Shella says lovely. Thank you. So our pot is ready again. I'm going to look at our chicken. And this chicken is going to be ready in a few minutes. And then I'm going to clean up because this oil is splattering all over my counter. Alright, so I'll come back to it. In the meantime, let me give you a tip. When you are blending hot liquid in a blender, you don't want, you only want to put it halfway up. You want to remove this little part from the blender so that the steam can escape because if the steam doesn't have anywhere to go, it is going to forcefully remove the lid of the blender and it might cause a splash. And then because the liquid is hot, it will burn you up. So safety first. So you remove this before you blend. The chef already is done. And thank you for all the knowledge that you gave me in cooking. And it was an honor learning from you. Thank you for stopping in, Arena, and thank you very much. So looking at my pasta, simmering down. I already added salt to my pasta water and the type of pasta I'm making is macaroni. Alright, here we go. So my blender is going on. What I like to do is to cover the top that I um, removed with a cloth and Turn it on. Check 
find a chicken. Thank you. It's out and safe at this moment. So our sauce is ready. It's time for us to strain it. Uh oh. This sauce messing up the whole of my good clothes. Alright guys, so let me just stop for a minute and check on my cookie. Cookie is coming along nicely. So we'll take them out. So for our chicken, I'm using a store-bought mushroom and tomato sauce. I love it. So let me just open it and with this sauce, you don't have to do much to it. All you have to do is just warm it up and you're good to go. Let me just open it. Come on, go in, open this sauce for me, it's messing up itself. So our sauce is coming on. Let's just check. So while we wait on that sauce, we are going back to our aki. Okay, we had a strainer. I like to pass it through a sieve because I want it to be velvety smooth. And this is what our aki sauce looks like. Okay. And just to help it to go through, I'm just using my handy dandy wooden spatula. We're not going to need all of this sauce because it's not a lot of pasta, but I want you guys to see what it looks like. Isn't that lovely? And guess what? It tastes lovely too. All right, so here we go. Our sauce is ready. That's about what we need. Let me just give it one last taste. You must taste your food. Okay? You have to taste. You have to season and you have to re-season and guys this tastes like aki this tastes like aki with a tubes of red rain and all of the good seasoning them that we added to it so now i'm going to basically finish our pasta dish we're almost there but before i do we're gonna get out all the other good stuff to finish this dinner. So lastly, I'm adding just a little tubes of cheese to our aki sauce because it's not a cheese sauce. So we're just adding a little cheese just to give it that extra creaminess and we wanna mix it in. We wanna just let the residual heat, our sauce is done, our sauce is ready. Whatever cheese you like, you can add it to this. So we're gonna switch around. Friday, heat on your own. This sauce messing up your total grand top. It is. I didn't I don't know why I didn't put on my apron today, you know. Okay, so this is my tomato and mushroom sauce. I'm just gonna use half of the can. Could you put this in the fridge for me, please? And the only thing I usually add to this sauce is a little bit of balsamic vinegar some hot pepper sauce and this is a street food saturday's red rage hot pepper picnic sauce i add lots of that to it because they want it spicy and then finally i add some sugar because it is too tart for our liking so we fix it up a bit And I'm just gonna let it come up to temperature and the chicken is going to get added to it and then we are going to serve it and that's all there is to 
our chicken with our mushroom this sauce is made with mushrooms and mushroom has a nice natural umami taste and umami is that japanese word for delicious eh, hello the guest finished on me get this stove here man this stove is getting on my nerve now shauna says hello <laughs> hi shauna so back to center stage back to center stage with my good old induction cooker that never failed me yet all right and our ackee sauce is on warm and we are going to mix our aki and our pasta together and dinner is going to be served let me get my dishes ready <clears throat> Our dishes. Sheila just wipe off in front of you there. Take this for me, Gawain, please. Um, let's move all of this out of the way so we can have some more space. We have our herbs for our salad. And we're good to go. Right? Sure, sure, said sure is laughing. Why are you laughing, sir? My my gas that keep running out. Make a little cucumber. <laughs> and I see they're begging out the cucumber that we're gonna use for the salad. So guys, I'm gonna strain the pasta. And then that's it. Here it goes. It's a lovely salad, guys. Our macaroni. It's ready. I love macaroni. They're big. So here goes guys, straining, straining, and straining. There we go. And our macaroni goes directly into our pot just like that and we grab a serving tongue and we mix the macaroni and the sauce and it's still out but that's fine come on macaroni on a stay put go back in there go back go back Let's use a serving tongue so that they don't go too far. And that's all there is to our ackee cream sauce and macaroni. All we're going to do now is add some nice fresh herbs onto this and serve it. Waiting on my sauce to come up to temperature for a chicken. It's almost there. So in the meantime, let me just clean up, clean up, clean up, clean up. So while that is happening here, hold on to this. We're just gonna finish our warm bulgur salad real quick so you guys can see what it is. All right, so we have a bowl for salad here. We have our finishing oil, so I'm going to add some olive oil. This is olive oil that I put all kind of things in, but mostly pimento because I love the pimento flavor. So this is my finishing oil. Then I'm going to be adding, take this off going, please, just this. I'm going to be adding our bulgur. Let me just wash my spoon. So here goes our lovely bulgur. And we're going to put some other good stuff. I have lots of herbs. I have the very overpriced tomatoes. Put some tomatoes in. 
I have red onions and cucumber. Remember I told you that this salad was inspired by the tabbouleh. Uh, so I'm putting all of the same flavors that you would find in the tabbouleh salad in just to make sure and I'm putting parsley lots of it and of course cilantro okay so one big bungle of parsley goes in can I have that cutting board that the stove was on and one big bundle of cilantro so parsley and cilantro they're very they're similar but they're also different um, cilantro has a more mint almost lemon note to it while while the parsley is a little bit more neutral and I found Italian parsley in the supermarket. Marsha, do you are uh, Marshi, do you sell your butter sauce? Yes, I do. So I'm just gonna chop up our herbs. I don't want to mince them up too fine because I really want them to be a part of this salad. Tanya Bailey, very overpriced tomato in the <laughs> Yes, my sister, these tomatoes, the price is scary. But I needed um, it for this dish, so I purchased it. So that is how much parsley and cilantro I'm adding into this salad because it needs it. It needs that big, fresh burst of flavor from the herb. And then we're going to just... Toss it up and serve it up. Can you get me that salad bowl over there maybe? Thank you very much. And one for the pasta as well. Thank you. All right, so it's we're time to take out our cookie. Great. Nobody remembers about the cookie. We're done. Here. Pertaining yes, to the sauces, where may I purchase them? You purchase them directly from us when you visit um, Street Food Saturdays. Um, our other customer um, who knows about them, they will call and order it and we and would arrange for pickup. So if you want the sauce, you can direct message. And we will arrange for pickup of the sauce. Let me just steal a little of this herb for this because I really can't bother cut up anymore. So this is our chicken. And we're gonna put the rest of our cheese on the chicken. And that's that. This goes in here. Just mix it in until the cheese starts to melt. So in the meantime, I'm going to serve my pasta. So the pasta is going down into its little container. All right. That's all there is to our creamy ackee macaroni. Going, I need another dish. Just grab me that um, other dish over there. Yes. Our chicken is ready. So if you guys make this, you could serve the meat directly over the pasta, but my bowl is a little bit too small tonight for that so i'm going to serve the chicken in a separate um, container and we will just help ourselves just like this see how simple that is 
it all eventually comes together. In and it's time to clean the edges. Kylie looks interesting. I love Aki. And it tastes so good. I actually just like it like that. I just um, like to just eat it like that. That coconut that we make put in the Aki sauce really make and that little red rim it makes it taste so much better just cleaning up the plate guys for a better presentation so that is that steal a little bit more of the greenery and put on top and that completes that then we're gonna go and let me just remove this out the way So this is going to be for our dessert. Swipe up here. Our banana bread chocolate um, cookies are going to go right there. Always say, Ashley, I don't want to mess up your flow. And then our warm bulgur salad. Let me just do the two spoon movement. We're just going to mix everything together. So if you are out there and you just want to be off meat, if you're a vegan, this salad is going to be good for you. And it's very simple to make. It just has onions, tomatoes, pumpkin, along with the bulgur. If you want some protein in it, you can add some nuts. Peanut, the raw peanut in this really, really is delicious. All right, so you can just throw some raw peanut in and it's gonna give it a whole different texture. And of course, if you put flavor in, you are definitely going to get flavor out. And that's how cooking is. Nadine Simpson, love that salad. So I have one other ingredient to add on my salad and it needs some acid. Let me just add some, the juice of a sour orange. Didn't Mark Farley, Sim, I'm hungry. Hey auntie. Lord, it's a sour orange and not even have much juice in there. And what the sour orange is this? Anyhow, let's see what we can get. So orange juice is amazing to add to your salad. So we had two seeds overboard. Just take them out. Pretty. I'm definitely going to try this salad. Oh, three seeds overboard. What's going on here? All right. So now it's time to plate. Tanya Bailey, think I'm going to try that bulgur salad. Yes, guys. Try this salad. Pretty. Everything looks delicious. Thank you. And we're putting in, yeah, so that's basically it for our salad. We're gonna put the leftovers aside because I don't think anyone can hold in this plate. Pisces, where can I find this? Where can you find what? The bulgur? Talk to me. Okay, so our dessert is going to come center stage. So these are our chocolate banana bread cookies. I put some roll oats on top. Roll around. Roll oats. So this is old-fashioned oats on top for texture and, of course, for garnish. So this is our dessert. All right, guys. So I thank you so much for tuning in, staying in. So we have our creamy aki macaroni. We use aki and coconut milk and red orange to make a sauce. Now, if you want this to be a complete meal, you can just saute up some chicken or shrimp and serve with it. It'll be just fine. 
Shrimp goes very well with that. Um, and this is our sauteed chicken. This was pan fried and then finished in a mushroom tomato sauce. And this is our bulgo salad. This has lots of fresh vegetables in there. Um, cucumber, red onion, and of course tomatoes, pumpkin, and sweet pepper. And then finally for a little treat, we have um, a cookie. This is a nice chewy cookie. This is great with tea. This is great with ice cream. We added our Jamaican chocolate in there tonight and we added the same flavors you would have added to your banana bread. And this is what that is. I want to thank you for stopping in, for staying in. Share the live before you leave and I will take your questions before I get off. Nadine Simpson, I need a recipe for that salad. All right, Nadine, I will definitely put this salad up on the channel. Chef Andre Davis, I will substitute the ackee, don't eat it. You don't eat ackee, Chef? I love it. Guys, can you share? Can you put this video on YouTube, please? Yes, this video would be on YouTube. This cookie with the banana, the chocolate, and the peanut butter is just playing a medley of flavors in your mouth. It's so good. Louise Jackson Walker, I love that salad. I'm surely going to make it. Thank you, mommy. And you can get instant oats, instant bulgur. Destiny, I enjoyed this live. Lisa says, I enjoyed it. Pretty says, thank you. Thank you guys for stopping in. I'm sorry, my mouth is full with that delicious cookie. Thank you for stopping in. Put that, put. Second and second. for staying in. All right? So again, from dessert, chocolate, banana, cookies. This is totally delicious, believe me. We have a bulgur salad for those who want to go off eating less protein and more fiber. This is a bulgur salad. It's very inexpensive to make. I added some turmeric and some cumin for extra flavor. You can add whatever flavor you want. I added some fresh sour orange juice at the end for flavor. This is our pan fried chicken in tomato and mushroom sauce. That we're going to be enjoying with our creamy aki macaroni this macaroni is just like it's just dressed with a sauce that is made with aki a little bit of red herring and lots of coconut milk and then we added just a tub of cheese um if you don't like the cheese you can always just leave it out so take care we're going to eat and share the live before you get off and we will put this video up on YouTube for you to go back and rewatch. I am your diva chef, Simone Walker Barrett. I thank you as always for checking in, for staying in, for following the food with us, the Street Food Saturdays, and of course, for subscribing to our YouTube channel, Next in Food. And I wish you a good, good evening and a blessed week to come. You guys, take care. Cheryl Jenkins, oh boy, I'm sorry. I missed everything. Oh, sure.